do you think is the role of um, electrical generation in an area like this? Well, I think that the, the valley and the area around it has uh, potential for quite a lot of renewables. We're in quite a windy location and we have some of the, the best yields from wind turbines, um, not in the valley itself, but up on the hills. Um, and of course, we've got potential for PV uh, on the roofs of many more houses in the valley. It's probably unlikely that we would, uh, we would ever become self-sufficient um, in, in electricity completely within, uh, within the area. But um, I think we, we have to think that there are many other places around the UK that can produce renewable energy for us. Yes. Um, offshore wind up in Scotland, there's much more resource. Solar farms are better in Cornwall than they are here, sadly. Um, and so we need to take a realistic balance. But uh, there's certainly potential for uh, a lot more renewables generation in the valley and perhaps we can get um, close to 50% of our, our use here. I know you've been growing fruit and veg um, at an all allotment and at home for quite a long time now. So we've been growing on our allotment up at Wooldale for five years now um, and at home as well we've had our house for five years so we've been starting to grow in the garden there too. We think now we've got to the point where we're growing about 80% of our fruit and veg through the summer and the autumn months and about 20% through the, the winter and the spring months so it's That's a bit trickier. Yeah. Um, through the the autumn and the winter we've got pumpkins ready for storing, we've just been digging up our potatoes, we think we've got enough potatoes to see us right through the winter until they start sprouting again in the spring. Mm -hmm. um, we've got apples that we're just about finishing off now because they're not unfortunately not good storers um, and we've got onions and garlic and kale that will be coming through the winter months to keep us going. Right. Eggs, we get our eggs locally, we've mused about getting our own chickens but it's quite a commitment and we haven't decided to go down that route at the moment. But I think that's a brilliant thing that we could all be doing more of yes. in the valley. Yes. So yes, that's that's where we're up to. That's not as great. With our yes. growing. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Why do you enjoy cycling in the Home Valley? Uh, Elm Valley is a great place to be out and about. Uh, it's a fantastic area for cycling and uh, there's no better passport to adventure than being on a bike. Uh, there's lots of quiet country roads to explore, challenging climbs, fantastic views. Um, and it's great to be use your bike to actually uh, reduce your carbon footprint. Um, I use it to go shopping, I use it to visit friends. Uh, there's a great cycling community in the area and it, it's great to be part of something. Do you think this is a realistic alternative to driving for some people? I mean, experience from Europe and uh, within the UK has demonstrated that if you put the correct infrastructure in place it really does encourage people who feel safe, they feel like it's a well managed environment and they're very happy to use their bicycles in a way that a lot of people aren't currently. It's great, it gets them out of their cars, gets them into the fresh air uh, and it's doing, doing a great job for the environment. I think there's some great times ahead for the Home Valley. We know, don't we, that uh, houses need a surprising amount of, of uh, heat through walls and floors and gaps around pipework and that sort of thing. But I think insulating the roof is the most effective thing to do if you can. Um, I believe you started with your roof. Could you tell me a bit about it? Yes, I can do, uh, Janet. The, I live in a four-bedroom house that's built in the 1980s. It's got a random stone walls. But oh, right. uh, when I moved in, uh, I had some insulation. And decided to, it was patchy. So I went and put some insulation in then. Uh, and at the time it was only about four inches of insulation and it did make a difference but then recommendations changed as energy prices rose mm. and I put in more insulation about four or five years ago and I noticed quite a difference when I did that um, because I'd actually laid some insulation between the rafters there wasn't any more room so what I did was to buy some insulation from B&Q that was on offer about three pounds a roll and I just literally rolled it out at, at 
right angles. Mm -hmm. It was very easy to do, but it's made a huge difference uh, to the actual warmth. You can feel the warmth. I, I'm not sure how much it's saving money, but it must be saving significantly. Well, Andrew, t tell us about why you bought a hybrid, hybrid car. Well, I am concerned about the environment uh, and climate change. And I've been thinking that an electric car would help with the transportation situation for a long time. But I've been worried that electric cars don't tend to go more than 100 miles or so. Uh, and that hybrid cars seem to have the petrol engine on all the time. And so I'm not sure how much help they are, really. But now there are plug-in hybrids. And I have a Mitsubishi FEV, uh, which you plug in and will do the first 30 miles without any petrol. But if you do want to go further, maybe on holiday or a little bit longer run, then uh, you can do that in the car. Uh, and it's uh, about 40 miles to the gallon normally, which is fine. Uh, and I only go to the garage once a month when I'm just on a normal run up and down the valley. Right. And uh, did it cost you a great deal more than a conventional car when you bought it? They aren't the cheapest cars, but for cars in that category, they cost about the same. The government's helping quite a lot at the moment, so mine was the same as the diesel would have been. And the government also puts in an electric point for you, so it's, it's a good deal at the moment. But even looking further forward, the fact that you don't have to put fuel in, for most people, I think, will be a big significant advantage and perhaps pay for a little bit of extra cost up front. So overall, it's, it's sort of lived up to what you hoped it would do for you? Yeah, it's the best car I've ever had. It does what it's supposed to do. Um, and uh, not having to put much petrol in does feel good mm -hmm. and having a nice big car which normally I would say is a bad thing but not doing too much damage to the environment is very nice to be able to do. Right. Good, very interesting, thank you.